So what's behind this big, giant goal you have? One billion people teaching them how to make a living doing what they love. I mean, that's that's absolutely my mission. I don't have the one billion attached to it. What's driving that gigantic goal? Mm. Um, as, a, as a first generation immigrant to America, my parents fled Vietnam in the fall of Saigon in 1975. Wow. So I was not born here. English is my second language. As, as this story is very common to immigrants, is the emphasis on education. Education is your way out of wherever you are in life. So you can start at the very bottom and move wherever you want. Case in point, my father started bussing tables when he first arrived in America. And I said, dad, you waited table? Because no one's gonna give a person like me even the opportunity to be a waiter. I cleared the tables. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, that's where my dad started in America. He wound up becoming the chief engineer at a semiconductor company in Silicon Valley. He was just at the right place at the right time, had the smarts and put in the work. What he didn't know about my father was after work, he would read manuals so that he can bone up on what he needed to learn to move up in his position. And this is what he was doing constantly. He was constantly retraining and learning new things. So I grew up thinking I must follow this very traditional path, be an engineer, be a doctor, an accountant, finance person, something like that. And just by sheer luck, I think, maybe fate intervene, uh, I was introduced to this world of design. And understanding and learning about that changed my life. It allowed me to make a living beyond any kind of expectation I had for myself. So I know education is a big key part in creating economic mobility for people, how we level the playing field, but the system isn't set up in a way that is fair and equitable to all people. We already know this. Yeah. If you have the good fortune to be raised by parents who have means, they will live in neighborhoods that have better schools. You'll be around similar uh, achievement mind minded focus or folks and you'll, you'll get the best tutors and you'll just get more of this, of what it is that success gives you. And then the opposite is true. You have family problems, you can't go to school, you can't pay for books, all, all kinds of things happen. And so the disparity between those that have achieved things and those that haven't are going to get wider and wider until I think, I don't know where that's gonna go, but it sounds like a revolution to me. I so feel like me, we're making progress though, Chris. Are we? I do, I think we are, and I'll tell you why. I think okay, you're please. an example of that. The, because now what we've gotta do is we've gotta do a better job of communicating and people of influence have got to say to those kids and those families that may not have all those resources readily available, I think folks like you on YouTube, you know, uh, I, I think, you know, of uh, companies that I work with that I endorse that are offering technology training for $15,000 over nine month period. I mean, I'm just saying, I, I think there's a whole lot to do. But I am saying that what you're doing, and that was the heart of my question, is, is you are bringing new people into the education opportunity because you are demonstrating something that I've been railing on for years, that the education system is outdated. It is. And, and, and well, there's a whole lot there. And I want to go there in a second. But I do think that technology, let's just call it YouTube, the world is now extremely flat. Friedman was right when he wrote it. I don't even think he understood it the way that it actually applies now. But a kid can come into contact with you. Yes. Who had that artistic talent to see things. And somewhere along the way, how old are you when you discover design? I'm 18 when I discover design as a possible profession. Yeah. but And that changed the course of my life. Yeah. Changed the course of your life. But 30 yeah. years ago, an 18-year-old figures that out and they've got to go the traditional route. Right. Go get a degree that they can't afford, may not even be able to use, or right. in the sense of it doesn't matter where they got their degree, they got to come out and do the work, they got to get hired. You're teaching people to do it now. I guess that's what I'm saying. I'm hopeful that the gap is closing, that a kid on the other side of the world can watch a YouTube video and have his imagination sparked and then inspiration develops from that. I, I, I'm hopeful for that. Tell me if I'm if I'm being too positive. I don't think you're being too positive. I think that's a very real thing that's happening. In in one way, I'm a very patient person. In another way, I'm very impatient. Yeah, I get that. I'm impatient and that I want it more to happen faster for more people. And you're agree. absolutely right. Uh, sometimes I travel to distant parts of the world and in remote areas and someone comes running up to me and saying, hey, 
a watcher video it really helped me out through a tough time. And this is the power of media. Yeah. Whether you're listening to something on a podcast, watching a YouTube video, or anywhere else that you can consume a piece of educational material, I, I think all the signs point to the right direction. We're moving there. What I'm just seeing, and where I, maybe I'm, I'm just uh, a, a guy getting on a soapbox here. I see a lot of money being invested mm -hmm. in traditional brick and mortar systems that keep people out. And if we were just to take a small fraction of that and disperse it elsewhere into the free market to help people who want to teach and are good at teaching at scale, give them more, more, more light, more love, and we'll see what happens. Well, you're absolutely right. But we've got it. You know what's got to happen? The system's going to, if it's going to have to fail. And I think it's, right. I think it's in a system, uh, I mean, excuse me, it's in a situation right now where with the skyrocketing student loan debt in this country, and the endowments of these Ivy League schools, you know, uh, Malcolm Gladwell's done a great job of shining light on this. At some point, it's not sustainable. They're going to have fat endowments, but nobody's showing up. And I just think that we are in the, the a real season now of a storm that's colliding. Kids are starting to realize, I don't need the degree to be successful. I think we're seeing the trades begin to get a new branding around them. And, and I think that the student loan crisis, it covers everybody, liberal, conservative, Republican, Democrat, it don't matter. Everybody's kind of like, this is out of control. And I think the message has got to be, and something I think you and I are aligned on is, is that the degree and the diploma is no longer a status symbol. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to get you anything. You're going to have to get out and compete. And you got kids that are wanting to come out of high school, Gen Z, the uh, most hopeful generation we've ever seen as it relates to entrepreneurship. It's on the rise. What are your thoughts on that? Why do you think this this generation, uh, more so than previous generations, at that age point of 18, you know, 17, 18, they're thinking, man, I may start my own thing. What do you think is the uh, cause of that? I think there's a lot of factors leading to this. And I think they're born into a time and place where more, more opportunities exist mm -hmm. than ever before. And really all you need today to be successful is the internet connection. And the most rudimentary device that you can connect to that internet will be a game changer for you. You can you can self-publish. When did that happen before? Yeah. You can write an article and you can publish an ebook or you can have it print on demand. So you don't need publishers uh, or curators to say like your, your art is worthy of being uh, paid attention to. We can create our own PR, we can create our own media, we can build our own audience and fan following. And we've, we've heard people describe this as the information economy. This is the economy we live in. And a subset of that is the creator economy. So a person living in rural parts in China can have an audience of thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of people following them from all over the world that want to see them succeed, will support them in their endeavors. And brands realize that. So we are seeing money moving away from traditional media into supporting uh, creators, to, to be able to connect with their audience. And I think this is a wonderful thing. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it is, it is, it's, it's like a new form of connection that a lot of people my age, boomers above me, they just can't quite get it. And the world at work is shifting all while this is happening. That's what's crazy, you know, coming out of the pandemic. I want to go back to something you said a moment ago and dive a little deeper. Do you think that we will see teenagers who have the raw ability and they just need a little bit of training, taking your area of expertise. Let's say you meet some kid, 17 years of age, loves you. Sure, you meet these kids all the time. They've got the chops. You can tell they've got the design chops. What's it take for companies to start to hire that kid when maybe a Chris Dew trains them versus your sexy state school? What's it going to take for, a, for, a, for an executive to go, you know what? We'll take that 18-year-old kid. He's got some character. More importantly, he actually knows how to do the work. We'll take a risk. What do you think has to happen? I think all it takes is intelligence, I think, because <laughs> what is the hardest thing for companies to do to grow? It's a competition for talent. Yeah, that's it. And you can compete at the highest end, which is like we're all trying to cherry pick from the Ivy League educated kids. And I get that. You're going to pay top dollar. You're going to pay money on top of that for recruiters. And many of these people come in with a certain sense of entitlement and they may not even work that hard for you or they might not even care or they're looking at their next thing. And so you're just a stepping stone. I literally do get kids who write to me, they're 16 years old 
and they can write copy. And it's like, I've looked at your sales page. I've studied writing. Here's a sample of my work. Would you consider me? I, I, I think we just live in such a unique time and place right now where that's a real conversation that's being had yeah. where I'm considering and interviewing several people that I don't know who they are in real life. I don't know where they've been. All I know is they sent me a sample and it looks promising. It's worth a greater conversation. Some kid was in Sweden. Some kid is from India, but it doesn't really matter. And I think that's a game changer. So I want to go where the talent is, not where it's been. What's your view? I kind of touched on this. I think our education system in America is broken. I think we're creating test takers, not pathfinders. That's what I think. What's wrong with the American education system in your words? I, I think what's happening is we're, we're, we have an education system that's built on a legacy of ideas that served us really well for a period of time. Mm-hmm. And if you just look in the technological advances, the, the game changing, the paradigm shifting things that have happened with smartphones, the internet, there's no way that these schools were designed to compete in this kind of space. And they, they reward convergent thinking, like get really good at something. You already mentioned memorization, test taking, following the rules. And, and um, oh, I'm forgetting his name right now. He wrote the book Range. The person who wrote the book Range, I heard him uh, uh, speak on a YouTube video. He says, here's the thing. School systems are designed to create convergent thinkers. People think there's one solution for everything. Mm. And it, it, they excel because in schools, it's, it's, it's a kind system. It's a kind environment, meaning we know what the rules are. We know what winning looks like. and We know how to get there. The path towards victory is very, very clear. But when people graduate from school and they go into the real world, we're now enter into a wicked system or a wicked environment where the rules are not clear. There's multiple ways to get there. The path isn't clear. Nothing is clear. And so now these people are going to struggle. I just got back from speaking at a conference for mortgage brokers, loan officers, and people in real estate. Oh my. I would consider pretty <laughs> left brain logical yeah. people. What shocked me about them was their thirst, their hunger for creative output. Mm. And so I was kind of just blown away by their energy and their enthusiasm. They wanted to work on public speaking, personal branding, design, marketing, creativity, all those things. And I was thinking, this is the problem with our system right now. The models for success tend to follow the old system. The new models for success are, are people like Logan Paul, who I read something recently, who's going to be estimated net worth of $200 million by being a person who's captured the attention and who's, who, uh, of young people and have been able to leverage it and then now monetize it. That is the future. Yep. I, I, I spoke to um, this young, young man, in, uh, he's from Japan, at an education conference. He teaches English to Japanese people on YouTube. So it's a very specific group. We were just, we were just talking about things. And he said, I have a, my own publishing company. I write books. I'm like, great. How much do you do in sales? One and a half million dollars in book sales just from his own books. Wow. But he smiles even bigger because he enrolls people and he makes $10 million a year teaching English. So there is still a lot of room here for, for people who are, who can teach, who understand how to use modern platforms like YouTube and social media to teach and enroll people for them to make more money in a year than an English teacher would make in their entire lifetime. That's right. The models are changing. 